Okay, so here is a circuitry problem to end the week off. This will be very similar to the quiz on Monday. So copy down the questions because I'm, I'm going to erase these so we can work it. And then those are the answers. I wrote the answers out. Okay, so the thing you want to do when you're doing a circuit problem is start by simplifying the given picture. So we'll scoot that over here. Now, the first thing you want to simplify is the 90 and the 10. Those two resistors are in series because from this point right here to this point right there, you know, the current going through this branch, does that current split? Yes. Mm, yeah, no. This current right in here, the current through here does not branch. So the 90 and the 10 are in series. So redraw the whole picture. Don't be lazy. You got to redraw the whole thing and it's going to look like this. So I'm simplifying the 90 and the 10 into one. Okay, so there's our 20 volt battery. This guy's 10 ohm. This is going to be 100. Oops, and then down here I forgot the 20. Then there's a 20 ohm down there. All right, next thing we're going to do. So here, I'll go down here. The next thing I'm going to do is redraw it again. Now what, now what do we simplify? The 10 and the 100, those guys are in parallel. So let's simplify those into one. So we redraw the circuit, and it looks like this. So now a 10 and a 100, you do the 1 over equation. This simplifies to 9.09 .09 ohms. And then down here we have our 20, and then this is 20 volts. So the pictures kind of go like this. So we're going from here to there, and then there to there, and then our last picture is going to be over here. So here's our most simplified picture, like this. Now, the 9, the 9.09, .09, the 20, are they series or parallel? They're series. Uh, last period, a lot, of the, a lot of kids were like, wait a minute, those are parallel. Because, I mean, they're geometrically parallel, but they are in series. <laughs> what makes these in series? Well, look, does the current branch, the current goes like this, around like this. Is there any splitting? Nope. So they're in series. So we add them together, and our total resistance is 29.09 ohms with a 20 volt battery okay so these are our pictures um, so now we can answer the rest of the questions let me make some more room I'm gonna kind of move this stuff around let's shrink this I'll kind of put that there that up there. Okay, so now we got some room to do this. Uh, let's label the current, though, before we go any farther. Let's call the current out of the battery I1, then I1 splits into I2 and I3. So both of these have I3, right? Current and series is the same. I3 goes through this whole segment here. Okay, then over here, we're back to what? I1, and then I1 comes back into the battery. Okay, so here we got, this would be I1, I2, I3, and then back here is I1. What do we have in this circuit? I1. What's in this circuit? I1. Okay, any questions at this point? Dude, what I just did is arguably the hardest part of circuitry. Like just set it, setting it up and simplifying it, you know? 
because you're going to use these pictures to answer the questions. Now, the next question, number two, was what's the current out of the battery? What did I label the current out of the battery? I labeled it what? I1. Okay. Now, are we going to use this picture here to get I1? No. You want to use the most simplified one. This is the one to use because we know the voltage across that resistor. If this is a 20 volt battery, that means 20 volts and zero volts, right? Because that's a delta V, it's the change. So right there is 20, right there is zero. What's the change in volts across that resistor? 20, so we can figure out I1. I1 is gonna be delta V over R. So the resistance here is 29.09. And then the voltage across that resistor is 20. So this gives us 0 0.6875 amps. And that is the I1 everywhere. That's the I1 here, 0 0.6875 amps. That's the I1 over here, 0 0.6875 amps. It's the I1 everywhere, 0 0.6875 amps. Okay, next question, number three. What's the voltage across the 20? Okay, so we go to this 20 guy right here. How do we find the delta V across this guy? We go delta V equals IR. Okay, what current goes through this 20? It's I1, 0.6875 amps, right? So 0 0.6875 amps times the resistance, which is 20, so the voltage across that resistor is 13.75 volts. Good. Okay, number four is the hardest one in this problem. Number four is the hardest. Number four wants us to find the current in the 90 ohm resistor. Now, what did I label that current? I1, I2, or I3? I3, we're looking for this guy right here. We're looking for I3, which flows all the way through these guys. Am I gonna use this picture though? Uh-uh, too hard. In fact, I don't, think, I don't think it's possible. We don't have enough info. So what we gotta do is we gotta start by going to this guy. Because look, we need to find the delta V right here. What's the delta V from this point to this point, right? Which, by the way, is the same as the delta V from this point to this point, right? Like those two, those dots are the same on both diagrams? Yeah. Okay, so how do we get the delta V across this 9.09? .09? You go I, I times I delta, v. I, delta V equals what? I times R. What current, what's the current in that resistor? 0.6875, right? That's, that's the current through this whole circuit, 0.6875. What's the resistance? 9.09. .09. So you multiply those out and you get 6.25. That's very important. We found the delta V here to be 6.25 volts. So dudes, what's going to be the delta V from here to here, between, between these two points, 6.25, right? It's the same thing. So basically, if we look at this 100 ohm resistor right here, if we look at that 100 ohm resistor, what's the delta V across that resistor? 6.25, it's the voltage from that point to that point, just like it was over here, from that point to that point was 6.25. Okay, what's the resistance through here, through this branch right here? What's that resistance? 100 ohm. So now we can figure out I3. I3 is going to be delta V over R. So it's going to be 6.25 volts over 100 ohms. So I3 is 0 0.0625 amps. Oh man, I gotta hurry. Bell's gonna ring. Okay. Next question. Yo. 
Okay, period four asked the same question. Period four was like, wait a minute. Okay, hold on. Why do we not want to use the 90? Because look, is the delta V, what's the delta V across the, the 90? I don't know. But look, what's the delta V across both of these? 6.25 across both of them. Okay. All right. Hey, you guys can go. I'm just going to kind of sit here and finish this by myself. I'm going to like talk to myself for the video. Okay, so number five was, hey, just pretend like you're interested here. So the power of the 20. The power of the 20. Yo. Yeah, hold on. Use I squared R. So the current through there is 0.6875 squared, 20 ohm, power of the 20 comes out as 9.45 watts. So now we got to figure out the energy used in, what would we say, 5 minutes, which is 300 seconds. So we use the definition of power. Power is energy per time. So energy is power multiplied by time. 9.45 watts, but a watt is a joule per second. And then five minutes is 300 seconds. And then this gives us an answer of 2,836 joules. Okay, and then the final question is how, much, how many coulombs, or no, second to final question. How many coulombs, so we're on to number six here, Number six, how many coulombs of charge pass through the battery in two minutes? So we use I equals Q over T. Uh, Q is the symbol for charge, and charge is measured in coulombs. So Q is going to be I times T. Um, the current through the battery is 0 0.6875, 6875 amps but an amp is a coulomb per second. So we'll just put coulomb per second. That's equivalent to an amp. Uh, and then our time is 120 seconds. Seconds cancel, and we get a charge of 82.5 coulombs. Now, the final question, how many electrons would this be? So for number seven, it's simply a conversion. So for number seven, we go 82.5 coulombs, and we know that one electron carries a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So the coulombs cancel, and we get 5.15 times 10 to the 20th electrons.